equities, so hot right now. We love tokenized equities at Solana. We've been talking about it all day. I'm excited to welcome to the stage my friend Matthew Siegel from VanEck and Parker from DeFi Dev, one of the fastest growing public equities on the planet, to talk about what's next. Give them a big round of applause. Okay, welcome everyone to the afternoon session. I'm Matthew Siegel from Van Eck. We are a mutual fund, an ETF sponsor that has expanded rapidly into crypto. Uh, we've been bullish on Solana, especially for four years now, written a lot of research on uh, what value Solana can bring to the world. Uh, our most recent product is an ETF that holds equities in the space. It's actively managed, called Node Vanek On-Chain Economy ETF. Uh, so this topic is very relevant to me personally, because I have my eyes on the equity screens every morning. And over the last six weeks, can't help but notice the astounding performance of one stock in particular, DFDV, DeFi Development. This stock has gone from 70 cents six weeks ago to $42 as we speak, roughly $600 million market cap. I'm thrilled to have Parker White, the CIO and COO of this firm. Parker, welcome. Thanks, Matt. Maybe you can start with the genesis story here. What is the idea that you had? What were you able to execute on? How did this capital formation happen so fast? Yeah, so, um, you know, we obviously I, I've been in the Bitcoin space for quite a while, been a strong Bitcoin believer. Um, some might even say a, almost a Bitcoin maxi for quite a while. And um, seeing what, you know, MicroStrategy's done, what Sailor has done, and um, so kind of watching that trajectory over the last few years and, um, you know, been running a uh, Solana validator for a little while as well. And so it was um, 100 and I think 27 days ago, um, Joseph, our CEO, and I, we both worked at Kraken for quite a while. Uh, we sat down and um, I sent him a two, three page kind of proposal on just an idea. We were just kind of noodling on stuff. And um, it was like on a Thursday, and he was like, oh, this is great. I love this. Um, Sunday, he called me, and he's like, hey, I, uh, I've met this guy, uh, Blake Janover, and he has a company. Um, do you guys want to, you know, do you want to do something? Um, and so from that day, it was about 83 days until we um, did the change of control, took over Janover Inc. at the time, um, renamed it to the DeFi Development Corporation. Um, and uh, it's been a pretty insane ride ever since. So just can I level set, how much capital did you raise? Sure. So um, initially, to kind of um, get us off the ground, we raised about 42 million from uh, Pantera, Kraken, Arrington, and a number of others. Um, you know, the entire team is former Kraken, and so it was great to have kind of the backing of Jesse Powell and uh, the old gang. Uh, we like to think of ourselves as the, the Kraken Pirates, the Kraken Breakaways. Um, so 42 there. And then um, a couple weeks ago, we raised about 24 million in a, um, uh, a pipe, which is a private investment in public equity. And that was a uh, common or you know, straight equity deal from a number of investors um, in that round as well. Uh, last cycle, when investors were getting their heads around DeFi, there was a very simple question that came up on the podcast with SBF and Odd Lots. Uh, the question was, where does the yield come from? So I want to ask a similar question. Uh, many of these crypto balance sheet companies are trading anywhere between two to five times the value of the underlying coins that they hold. So the question is, where does the premium come from? Why should investors pay more than the value of the coins that you hold? It's a great question. So the way that we think about it, um, and I have to give credit to our uh, wonderful IR guy for kind of coming up with this, um, this viewpoint, but 
what you actually do is you want to take the nav and you want to separate it. You want to do a kind of a sum of the parts analysis, if you will. So you actually just value the coins on the balance sheet as one, because a, a dollar is a dollar, right? But then what you want to do is you want to look at the expected or your view of the expected future growth rates in those coins on the balance sheet. So in the same way that you might pay a PE to a company that is growing earnings, um, and you, uh, you know, nowadays you pay quite a pretty large multiple there, um, you would ascribe um, some value to the accumulation component in the future. Because if, if I could buy one Solana today and it's just going to be one sold forever, then I would just pay one dollar for that. But if I could buy something that would be one sold today and then two sold the next day and then three sold the next day, you would be willing to pay more than one sold today, basic finance 101, present value stuff. Um, and so that's kind of how we think about it. We separate the nav to its you know, current value and then this future projection. And we think that kind of evaluation framework makes a lot of sense. OK, so the yield on staking Solana is 5 to 7%, something like that. So you should be able to earn kind of that base level of return. The valuation of the stock implies that you're going to grow a lot faster than just a staking yield or a validator business. So how, how does that work? Sure. So there's a, a number of components um, to a treasury strategy. And I'll speak to you know, one on Solana in particular. Um, there's certainly the staking yield, as you highlighted there. We, uh, we run validator in-house as well. And so we don't pay fees to a third-party validator. We keep that fully you know, vertically integrated, if you will. Then on top of that, we can get third-party delegation. So we, we did announce a Kraken partnership um, a number of weeks ago. Um, we announced a, um, a Bonk partnership last week, hence the, uh, the bandana here. Um, shout out to those guys. But there's lots of partnerships that we can do where we can get additional delegated stake to the validator. And that all flows through to you know, sole per share growth, which is our key metric. Um, on top of that, there's you know, other things that we can do. There's um, you know, discounted lock soul out in the market um, that as long-term large buyers of Solana, we can take advantage of in a way that you know, the guy with 1000 bucks on Kraken or whatnot can't you know, get access to. Um, and so there's a number of ways that we can generate this you know, yield. Then, of course, you've got the MicroStrategy playbook, um, issuing converts, um, issuing equity. But the business for us actually works even if you throw all that away um, because of the validator, because of the external delegation, because of some of these other things. Um, that's how we're able to generate above the kind of median staking yield of you know, the globe. Last cycle, the crypto companies that took on debt had a pretty tough time in the bear market, right? So. Bitcoin and debt are kind of allergic to each other because it's this bare asset, and many of the largest balance sheets in the world can't really touch it still. Uh, so I think there's a consensus that debt is bad. Uh, maybe you can tell us why, that's, why that might not be the case for DeFi dev. Sure. So I think um, de uh, debt in the appropriate amount is good. It can be used as a uh, turbocharger, right? Um, a lot of gasoline with a match is really bad, but gasoline in a race car is really good, right? And so I think it's very important to um, you know, manage debt. Um, but I think a key component here, key differentiation, is secured versus unsecured debt. Right? So secured debt, you can have a margin call on it. The asset wicks down 50% in a day and you get liquidated and then the next day it's up 40% but like too bad you're out, right? Versus with unsecured debt, it's simply an obligation of the company. It's kind of like a credit card, right? Where it's an obligation of you as the individual and your credit score. It's not like a, a, a car loan where like, you know, it's secured by that car, right? And so unsecured debt, um, as long as you're able to make your coupon payments and you have enough cash at maturity, or you're able to refinance at maturity or at some point before, it's much less risky than, um, at least from a crypto volatility perspective, than secured debt 
or a margin loan, which you can get liquidated at any moment because these are volatile assets. One thing that Michael Saylor has done very well is make relationships with the convertible bond managers who are running these arbitrage strategies of buying convertible debt and shorting the stock. And he's promised them uh, that MicroStrategy will deliver a certain amount of supply at a certain amount of volatility. And then the end buyer, the convertible bond buyer, might not even care about Bitcoin. Uh, but at this point, kind of everyone knows the investment thesis for Bitcoin. So when you look to seed the garden here and educate the convertible bond buyers maybe about why DeFi Dev may be an attractive issuer, are you educating them on Solana too? Does it matter? Where are they in that adoption curve of understanding the base asset? It is still very early. Uh, we had a uh, kind of a uh, non-deal roadshow, if you will, earlier today with some investors, and we spent, I don't know, 75% of the discussion talking about staking and the, dif the difference between inflation rewards and block rewards, um, how a validator kind of serves as like a, a toll booth, if you will, collecting transaction fees. We spend. I would argue the majority of our time actually talking about Solana and less about the company strategy. Thankfully, MicroStrategy has kind of laid out, you know, at least the, the foundation of the company strategy. We, we think of ourselves as MicroStrategy Plus, but that story is actually better understood than the Solana story. And so, you know, we end up seeing ourselves as a bit of Solana evangelists to a whole bunch of people that, you know, shocking for this room, but a whole bunch of people that have never heard really about Solana or maybe heard the name but don't know anything about it. Um, so it's pretty cool to be able to you know, do that. Nice. Uh, what, have you, what else have you learned from Sailor and MicroStrategy or maybe something else about how to handle the inevitable bear market? That's a, uh, that's a great question. You know, I think it's obviously um, as a public company, you know, never promising um, anything that you can't deliver on, but ultimately making sure that un people understand that, you know, volatile assets are volatile assets, right? They can go up, they can go down, and as fast as something can go up, it can go down. And so making sure that, uh, you know, investors, yeah, volatility is great, it's great to trade, but you always need to size your risk appropriately, and if you're concerned, going into the weekend or overnight that like something's going to happen and it keeps you up at night, you know, you should probably size down and um, a volatile uh, asset like this isn't for everybody. Um, but for some people that want access to, you know, over the last seven weeks has maybe been one of the most volatile assets on uh, the planet, you know, it's a uh, pretty interesting product. Okay, last question. We're sitting here one year from now and don't worry, this is not financial guidance. <laughs> But what would constitute success? Is there an amount of Solana that you might own? Is there a market cap? Is there a, a Solana yield? How should we measure success in a year? So our North Star metric is Sol per share growth. And you can actually go on our website. It's right there on the main page. Um, you can go to our executive comp tab, and you'll notice that all executive bonuses and non-executive bonuses are all tied to specific levels of Solana per share growth. So that's kind of our North Star metric, growing Solana per share uh, on the balance sheet. I think you know, beyond that, certainly things like market cap and volume, liquidity, all these things are great. Um, <clears throat> you know, maybe beyond a year, um, really excited to put the days behind us where we walk into a room with investors and have to spend time talking about Solana. Um, our goal is for institution investors across the capital stack, equity investors, debt investors, kind of crossover investors, they all hear the Solana story in the same way that Michael Saylor has been this evangelist for Bitcoin in these rooms that um, you know, none of us crypto nerds have really been able to get into until now. So I think long-term success will be um, far more capital and investors knowing about Solana. Okay, crypto equities, watch this space. Give it up for Parker.